I am doing this as a virtual machine because I do not have this operating system installed on actual hardware. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, let me just go open this up here. So yeah, let me just go open this up. And there are some interesting quirks about this specific version that make it quite different compared to its normal counterpart. If you saw, for the split second that I was seen, instead of displaying the text welcome, it displays the text please wait. This is the default start screen layout. Notice there are barely any UWP apps. If we go here, you can see, and yeah, this is kind of laggy, but there's, but I've tried as much as I can do, but there's nothing I can really do about it. There are barely any UWP apps. Like, you get, like, the PC settings, photos, camera, Internet Explorer, and store, and that's basically it. Everything else is just average of pre-Windows 11 accessories. Some of them may be pre-Windows 10. But as you can see on the desktop, Notice there is nothing pinned to the taskbar. We also get the build string, which is shows us as build 9600. And yeah, this doesn't have VMware tools installed either, because for whatever reason, it decided that it didn't want to install. I mean, it might install, but I don't know. We're not going to try and find out in this video. But pretty much what you should probably mainly know about the embedded versions is that they're effectively stripped down versions of windows that are designed for use in stuff like the workforce. Like, for example, if you've ever gone to an ATM, there's a pretty good chance that if it's not running OS 2, it's probably running an embedded version of Windows, such as POS Ready 7. Let's cover the calculator. As you can tell, this has effectively remained the same as it was in Windows 7, except this also has a unit converter. I am not sure if that was in Windows 7, but you get a basic calculator. 5 plus 3 equals 8. You have the task manager, which I've never covered, but this is basically how it was in Windows 10. It somehow displays my the CPU and my PC. This is also the 32-bit, meaning that there's only 2.5 gigabytes of memory available. There's a 2.3 reserved to the hardware. You have a virtual hard drive with 320 gigabytes. You get app history, which basically is UWP app history. Startup, there's nothing to display. Users, details, services. As you can see, there's like barely anything open. You have the command prompt, which shows to you, this is Microsoft Windows version 6.3.9600. You get this. Yeah, I'm going to probably see if I can do a few MS-DOS kind of commands. Because technically, I'm pretty sure these were like MS-DOS kinds of commands. Well, they were probably in, in MS-DOS. I'll probably go check to see if any of these commands were MS-DOS ones by go checking that with MS-DOS 6.22 in an online emulator. Hmm. Um, an app on your PC needs the following Windows feature. Okay, uh, yeah, I think we need that in order to... Okay, mem.exe. I think what that does is some sort of memory-related thingy in MS-DOS, if that's even a thing. But, yeah, that does not... The system cannot execute the... Go do this. You got a ton of commands. It feels like I'm, you know, it kind of feels like I'm doing. Okay, check disk. 
Okay, uh, okay, I think I put that in wrong. Access denied as you do not have sufficient privileges. You have to invoke this utility in an elevated mode. So yeah, somehow even the... Even the, um... So even if we uh, use command prompt, I mean, this may uh, just be because I'm not using the admin specific command prompt. Okay, we'll just do tree. And I'll exit. So yeah, that's your daily dose of command prompt. Or well, maybe in this case, the yearly dose because I've never really c covered the command prompt in any of my videos. <laughs> Let's go to notepad. I have no idea how... I have no idea how old this specific format was before they changed it in Windows 11. I wonder how long of a run that actually had before it ended up getting changed in Windows 11. We have Windows PowerShell, which is basically a better version of the already existing command prompt. I mean, it's Probably not. We have Windows Defender, which... In terms of the interface... Looks rather similar to Microsoft Security Essentials, which I might make a video about in the future. There's the control panel. We can go to system here. And there's really loud speakers uh, outside. You have firewall. Action center. Which basically uh, tells you all that kinds of stuff. And then you have the file explorer. Despite this, there are actually the music pictures, videos, folders. Um, we can go into here. And let's cover registry editor. We are not going to mess around in here, though, because, just generally speaking, this is something that you do not want to mess around with, because if you do... Basically, what you can do... I mean, if you, if you know how to use this, you can do stuff like, in like, Windows 95, you can pretty much just make your own custom stuff, but yeah, that's a registry editor, let me X out of that, but anyway. If we go into system 32, let's go set this to this. There are 300, no, 3,355 items. I'm gonna see if there's any sort of viable reason to compare that to stuff like Windows 11. I mean, we're not gonna mess around in here. You kind of get the idea. So yeah, that is a demo of Windows Embedded 8.1. But, before we can shut down, if you go here, you don't get the option to shut down here. And how this shuts down is kind of different. If I can get the... This to work. We have to go to... Power... And sh shut down. And this is kind of different than normal versions of Windows. Or well, at least the normal Windows 8.1. As you just saw, it shut down with just a blank screen. And yeah, with that, thanks for watching. I will see you next week.
Bye.